Hello, my friends, and welcome to Daisy Chain Principles, or welcome back. Either way, I'm so glad you're here. Today, we are going to be doing a flip through of Math Lessons for a Living Education Level K. My five-year-old daughter, Daisy, is currently going through this book, and I absolutely love it. We are in the middle of the school year. A lot of the pages are already ripped out and used, but I'll show you the scope and sequence. I will show you some of the sheets she's already completed earlier on, and then I'll show you some of the unused sheets in here for third and fourth quarter just started the third quarter. All right, let's dive right in. So sorry guys if this angle doesn't work the best. This is the best I could do with the setup I have. Math Lessons for a Living Education has tear out pages. I've been taking the pages out and storing them in this binder as we go. I do like to keep the kids work just even though it's not actually required in our state. I just like to. Um, last year we tossed all their work and it just felt odd. And I'm about to change up our system to just put all the paper, both done and undone, into one binder that's not quite so thick because it's getting annoying when we do three pages in a day and I set it aside to file away later and then I have to try to put the pages back in order. So let's go ahead and jump in. I will show you the scope and sequence. She does start with what most people would consider like a kindergarten review in the first quarter. There is a section in all of the math lessons books here where they leave a space for the due date, um, checking off that it's done, and the grade. I don't give my kids due dates yet because of their age and I don't believe in grading systems, but it is really nice to just check off the lessons as you go and see your progress. So I still like this section even though we're not graders. Lesson lasts one week, so we know that a quarter of the school year is nine weeks. So the first nine lessons for quarter one focus on shapes, opposites, and an introduction to cooking, measuring, and graphing. This is the very first lesson in the book, super simple, talking about a rainbow and symmetry, having her trace lines, some number recognition and counting, some color recognition and counting the balls practicing some tracing, jumping on ahead to lesson five. Charlie and Charlotte are the characters we follow in all of the books, and there's always a story at the beginning of the week, something about Charlie and Charlotte's adventures, they're twins. So exercise one for lesson five says, Charlie and Charlotte notice that a door has four sides, but two sides are short and two sides are long. This is called a rectangle. So then you ask her, how many sides does a rectangle have? How many long sides? How many short sides? And then you just kind of go around the house and look for things that are shaped like rectangles. Then they start talking about opposites and comparison. So notice that a giraffe is tall and Charlie is short, that the mouse is small and the bear is big. We've got some tracing over here to show her how everything in life is made up of shapes. Some more just attention to detail exercises. First, she circles the smaller red fruits. Then she circles the larger green and yellow fruits. Circle the smaller purple and brown fruits. She loves these kind of exercises too. So that is quarter one in a nutshell. Moving on to lesson 10 through 18. She starts focusing on a number of the week for number recognition, starting with zero, cooking and measuring sequencing, completing sequences. So let's take a look at lesson 11. We started with a pretty cool geography story with Charlie and Charlotte, and we looked up where Papua New Guinea was on our globe. So here you can see she's reviewing and tracing the number zero for recognition. Color the objects and count how many there are in each row. We didn't make her color, um, but she counted and then practiced writing the number. Circle the measuring cup that is the biggest. Circle the measuring spoon that is the smallest. This book has really sparked an interest in cooking in her, and she is with me in the kitchen constantly now. Where does each item belong? And she traces a line to what goes in the refrigerator, what goes in the pantry. She gives you a recipe to teach her how to make wedding cookies. We ended up skipping this and doing a different recipe out of our own recipe book instead. Let's skip ahead to lesson 17. Here they get into sequencing. What order do you think things happened in? So first there was a whole apple, then one bite, and then step three, it was eaten. So. Again, here he takes a bath, brushes his teeth, goes to bed. Lots of sequencing practice. 
And here, the seed, water the seed and it grows. More sequencing. Here you read the Humpty Dumpty poem and then ask her to tell you what happened. So some narration, which is very Charlotte Mason style. More sequencing. Looking at quarter three, so lesson 19 through 27. We're continuing the number of the week for number recognition four through 10. That seems to really be the focus for quarter three, which is I think what we're in right now. I'm sure there is some spiral review throughout, so we'll take a look at that now. I should be done with this binder. So you can see she's ready for lesson 20, which is third quarter. So here we have our number of the week, number five, and just tracing it and a description for how to trace it. Make a hat and a neck and a belly. Color the number five. You can always pause if you just want to look at the pages. Critical thinking, take the numbers on the left and write them in the box in the correct order. That is a combination of number recognition and sequencing, which she's been learning. I always find her spiral approach so creative. Tracing and counting objects. Roll the dice and then pile that many blocks on top of one another. My kids don't really play with blocks anymore and we don't have any, so we will probably just play a game like trouble or sorry that involves rolling dice because she'll still get that counting practice in that way. Color five buttons, review of the number five and tracing it, connect the dots. Let's jump ahead a bit in quarter three. I'll go to lesson 26. Put a triangle on the beak of 10 birds. So you've got shape recognition using a triangle, counting review, counting 10 birds. Roll and build, roll the, roll the die and build a tower with that amount of blocks. Again, we'll probably play a different game involving dice or something like that. Count how many of each birds there are and write in the box. So kind of testing her on number recognition. Got a riddle for her. I am the number that tells you how many fingers you have. I am the number of beaks a bird has. I am the number of wings a bird has. I am the number of birds Charlie and Charlotte saw on their patio. Review of numbers, count and match the dice. Point to the group of birds with six in it and say six. Point to the group of birds with five in it and say five. So that is a look at quarter three, quarter four, lesson 28 through lesson 36. Look at lesson 30, shapes review. How many shapes do you see? Oh, that's so cool. So she counts a number of triangles, number of circles, rectangles and squares here. Make a shape friend below using circles, triangles, rectangles, ovals, and squares. It is so easy when you're teaching to just skip over this stuff, to just be like, whatever, she knows her shapes, she colors already. But I try to really slow down with my child and enjoy these assignments. And we will make, you know, a 20 minute lesson out of this and color it together. It is worth the time to do these exercises. Match the shapes to the objects. Trace and color the shapes as directed. So this week focuses a lot on shape recognition review. And then instead of color by number, it's color by shape here. Little craft using popsicle sticks and colored paper to glue together. She loves crafts. Let's skip ahead to lesson 35. Of course, it always starts with a story. So the story involves possible versus impossible and review of symmetry. Review symmetry. Symmetry is when we cut an object in half and both sides are the exact same. This is so cool because if you think about it, this is preparing them for fractions in level one. Draw lines to cut the objects into symmetrical pieces. Now on the next page, you read a sentence to her and she's supposed to tell you if it is possible or impossible. A bee will fly into a beehive. A dog will walk on water. A frog will hop into a pond. Symmetry review, so she matches uh, the other side of the picture. That is one of her favorite exercises. Another game of possible versus impossible. So I read the sentence with the image to her. Spiders crawl, spider crawls on a web. She circles possible or impossible. A dog cooks us dog. Sometimes things may be possible but not likely. Look at this example. There are two red fish in this pond and eight blue fish. Do you think it is more likely that I will catch a red fish or a blue fish? How likely are you to grab a star? How likely are you to grab a purple rectangle? Just lots of critical thinking to prepare her for math. More possible versus impossible. More likely versus unlikely. Circle the fish that you are more likely to catch. 
Another round of possible versus impossible. Review of symmetry and matching the other side of the picture. Is it likely or unlikely to get a red gumball? And the final lesson is about right and left. She actually already knows right and left, unbelievably. I did not teach her. This teaches her about first, second, third, and fourth. Over here, they put it to the test. So she tells me which animal is first, which animal is second, horse, third, duck. Review of numbers and tracing. Again, they go over first, second, third, and fourth. Color the shape that is first, the shape that is second, the shape that is third. Circle the correct missing ice cream scoop. Number recognition and sequencing put together. Review of first, second, third, and fourth again. Little introduction to money here and telling her that a penny is one cent. So if we count these together, how many cents are there? Fill in the missing numbers on the strawberry vine. Critical thinking. Draw three birds above the boat, two fish below the boat, and two ducks on the water. Match the apples to the number. Circle whether the animal is facing left or right. I'm kind of bummed there's no certificate of achievement in the back. I wonder if I can find one or make one up. Yeah, that is a good thorough look inside of this curriculum. That's it, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this valuable. And if you did, please remember to like, subscribe, and comment below with any questions you might have. And I will see you next week. Bye. <laughs>